matrix operations. Here, I want to define lots of things you can do with matrices. Uh, and these are operations that you can do with any dimension matrix. Most of these operations, um, or at least with square matrices um, in some cases. Here, I'm going to focus just on two by two matrices. You, For the most part, if you can do it in two by two, you can do it with higher dimension. It's just sort of iterating that process again and again. Um, so for sake of cleanliness, I'm just going to show all these operations in the two dimensional, in the two by two case. Um, so what do you what do you want to do with matrices? Kind of all the same things that you do with numbers. Um, you want to be able to add them. You want to be able to um, do scalar multiplication. Um, subtraction is just a scalar multiplication by minus one and combined with addition, right? So that's Addition and subtraction kind of come from those two. Um, you want to be able to multiply and divide them, right? Division here, um, I have it in quotes because this, we typically don't call it matrix division. Instead, usually you call it matrix inverse, right? An inverse matrix. So division is multiplication by the inverse if, if for matrices. Um, so that's, you know, you want to be able to add, subtract, multiply, divide. Um, another fun thing you want to be able to do is, is exponentials. It turns out once you have all these earlier operations, you can actually define a, a matrix exponential. Uh, it's a super neat construction. So that's, um, it, it's a lot of the same stuff you do with vectors or with numbers or with polynomials or right, all these other wonderful algebraic objects um, is a lot of the same, it's a lot of the same algebraic operations that we're trying to define here. Um, so let's let's dive on in and talk about how these go. So um, the first thing I want to do is just say, just note that there is notation for the set of all matrices. Um, if you want, a lot of times you'll see a script M and then you'll see the dimensions, the number of rows and number of columns. Um, and then you'll see, you know, what the inputs are in parentheses. So this means the set of all two by two matrices um, with real numbers as entries, right? So that would that's what you would find here. So it, it's any object that looks like this, A, B, C, D, where A, B, C, and D are all real numbers, right? That's the, this is the set on which I'm going to define all of these operations above. Um, and right, so this is the set of all two by two matrices, um, right, with real entries. That's the set that we're working on here. Right, with real number entries. Um, and we're going to use these, you know, sometimes where it's not just a real number as an entry, but maybe a, a function as an entry, um, you know, T, X, whatever. Um, but you can also, for, for the moment, at least we'll just say they're real quantities. Um, so let's, let's look at how to do these operations. So let's start with our first operation here, our first operation, matrix addition. Right, so the way that you do matrix addition is um, component-wise. So matrix addition, um, and then number two, scalar multiplication. So these are, these both happen component-wise. Um, and what do I mean by component-wise? I mean that if you have two matrices that you want to add to each other, Right, so we have A, B, C, D, and then E, F, G, H. To add those up, you just add corresponding components. So you'd add A to E, you add B to F. You add C to G, and you add D to H. You just add the corresponding components, right? And if you have, the scalar multiplication is also component-wise. If you have some real number R, and you multiply it by a matrix, you just multiply every single component by that number R. All right, so that's um, one and two. Um, this, it turns out, is not too hard to show um, that under these operations, right, with this addition and this scalar multiplication, the component-wise operations, um, this set of all matrices is actually a vector space, right? You could check all 10 um, vector space axioms. You could check them all off. Um, it satisfies everything. It's closed under addition, closed under scalar multiplication, under inverse, um, all that, all that good stuff, right? It, uh, 
Um, it has an additive identity, right? The matrix zero, 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 right? There's your additive identity. So it actually satisfies every single property that you need to be a vector space. Um, and in fact, in some ways, um, it is just exactly the same vector space as R4, right? Um, if you did ordered four tuples, ordered quadruples of real numbers, right? It's kind of the same vector space. If you just write A, B, C, D as your four entries, instead of writing uh, A, B, C, D, right? Instead of putting them in a box, you just stack them all up. Um, it, it, as a vector space, it's actually the same, exactly the same object, right? Um, isomorphic is the word that they, they use for that. Um, the technical term for same in this in this context. Right? So, um, so you might say then, well, then why even, why not just talk about R4? Why even do two by two matrices, right? Um, well, it's because of these other operations. There are other operations like matrix multiplication, which make a lot of sense for matrices that don't really, you don't usually talk about an operation like this um, when you're talking about vectors of, of length four, right? Um, so here's, so here in this third operation, this is where we're really going to treat a matrices like a matrix. So here's as an object different from just four real numbers in a list. So, so here's how you do matrix multiplication. What you do is if you want to multiply one matrix by another is you multiply um, row by column. And what you do is you take a dot product of a row vector of each row vector with each column vector. So when I do that row by the column, I record the dot product here. So I do A, E, plus B, G. That would be the entry that I that I put there. And then you, you do that for every row and every column. And the way you decide where to put the result of that is based on what row and ro what column you selected. So, so here I picked row one, right? See here, this was row one in green, and this was column one in green. Therefore, I recorded their dot product in row one, column one over here, right? So you just you just use whatever row and column you chose from your matrices, use those in your result. And it's always a row from the first matrix and a column from the second matrix. So let's let's do this again. Let's do now the next one. Let's do here, row one, but we'll do column two, right? So that's what I'm doing now. So I'm, I'm using again row one, but now I'm going to use column two, and so I'm going to record that entry here in row one, column two. And what do I record? I record, again, the dot product of those entries. So I record A, F plus B, H. Right, that's the entry that I put there. Then what do I have? I have some work to do here in row two. And I'll do row two with column one. Right, so this is going to be right row two now, two, right with column. So that's why I highlighted here the landing pad for our little dot product uh, projectile. Right, is in row two, column one. So that's going to be C E plus D T, and then lastly we. Do the same thing on row two, column two, which will get recorded here, right? And this is going to be C, F plus D, H. And that's what goes there in row two, column two. And I think we're seeing now why they make yellow highlighters, but not yellow pens. <laughs> it was great for shading and terrible for, for writing. Anyway, um, fortunately, it was, it was the last case, the only one left, two, row two, column two. Um, so that's how you do matrix multiplication, right? With a two by two matrix times another two by two matrix, right? Which produces yet again another two by two matrix. So this um, is, uh, this is a, a very, very nice operation. Um, Here's something that I want to, I, I want to do an example here. Um, one example I want to show is I want to show what happens if you take A, B, C, D, and you multiply it by the matrix 1, 0, 0, 1. 
right? To do a really specific example here. So carry out what happened up there. What does this become? You get a times one plus b times zero, right? And here I'm skipping all the shading and just filling in all the, the values, right? Then we get, um, what do I get here? I get a times zero plus b times one. Okay. Then I get c times one plus uh, b times zero, or sorry, b times zero, right? And then I get c times zero plus d times one. Right? And now simplify, Can't get rid of the zeros, the terms that are just zero. What do you get? You get a, b, c, d, right? It returns the original matrix, right? So notice, no matter what I started with here on the left, when I multiplied by this matrix, it just gave me back the original that I started with, right? And similarly, um, if you do it the other way around, and this is a good exercise, I'm not gonna do this here in the video, but try this on your own, right? If you do it the other way around, if you take it, and you multiply on the left instead of on the right, um, this gives you back the original matrix as well. Right, so this is why we call this matrix, we call this the identity matrix. Because it's the multiplicative identity in this for these matrices, right? No matter what you multiply by it, it always returns just the same, the same matrix back, right? So that's that's a nice fact about matrix multiplication is that there is an uh, identity, right? There is an identity matrix for, for multiplying square matrices, right? So that's um, and that ends up being a very very important important matrix. So um, one thing to note is that matrix multiplication. in general is not commutative in general, right? So the, the identity matrix, yes, it didn't matter if you multiplied it on the left or on the right, it always produced just the original matrix again. Um, but the but in general, it, it is not necessarily a commutative operation. So, so you have to be a little careful there. Um, you know, you get in the habit of things being commutative say when you're just working with ordinary multiplication over the real numbers, you know, two times three is six, three times two is six, doesn't matter if you write two times three or three times two, right? Um, but here, here it really matters, right? So for example, let's pick um, two matrices, right? So let's say A is a matrix, let's say one, one, zero, one, and let's say B then is a matrix um, minus one, zero, one, one, right? Let's say that these are the two matrices that we that we select. Um, now, these do not commute with each other, right? If you do A, B, what do you get? If you, so you, I'm gonna multiply them first A and the second B, right? And if I do this, what do I get? I'm gonna do, so, Right, I'm going to first do these two, right? I'm going to do that dot product. I get zero, right? So that's that entry. Then I'm going to do, and and I'm not going to keep all the shading just so it doesn't get cluttered up, right? Um, so I get so I get zero there, right? Then what's the next one? I'm going to do this one and this one, right? So I get one. Then I'm going to do um, this one and this one. Right, so I get one, and then I'm gonna do those two, so I get one, right? So that's A times B. Whereas if I go the other way around, if I do B times A, I'm not gonna get the same result, right? And this is something a little surprising at first because we're so used to commutative multiplication over the real numbers, even over the complex numbers, right? So now, now let's look at this instead, right? What do I get when I do these two matrices? Well, here on that first coordinate, I get minus one. Already you see a different entry. I had zero in the top left. 
on AB, but I have negative one on BA. Right. Um, then let me do just for sake of you know already we know they're not they're not um, equal A B and B A right but for sake of completion let's let's finish the uh, the task here of doing this matrix multiplication right so um, right then I get minus one on that next dot product here I get one and finally here I get two right so. They're not the same matrix, right? They have um, actually three out of four entries are, are different from each other, right? Um, so you can see that, right, that for this particular choice of A and B, we have that BA is not equal to AB. Right? So this is, this is really good to, to be mindful of that um, matrix multiplication is not a commutative operation, right? Um, you know, sometimes it, sometimes two matrices will commute, like the identity matrix commutes with anything, whether you multiply on the left or on the right. You always get just that original matrix back. Um, so a, you know, a i does equal i a, no matter what a you start with, right? That's always true, um, because they're because they're both just equal to a, right? So there, that's that is true. A the identity matrix commutes with everything, um, but not you know if you just pick two matrix matrices at random, there's it's almost probability zero that. Um, that they'll commute with each other. So, all right. And if you don't believe me, I'll um, confess that I did not prepare this example before making the video. I just, I, that's how confident I was. I was like, ah, just write down some stuff at random. They're not gonna commute, right? So I was willing to, that's how low the probability is that two matrices will commute. Uh, if you just write down some random entry, you said I was, I was willing to, uh, that time cost potentially of having to stop and delete that part of the video if it didn't go as planned that's because it was such a low probability so all right so there's our um operation of matrix multiplication and two important facts about matrix multiplication right uh, one that there is a multiplicative identity for matrix multiplication and two that matrix multiplication is not community right? all right so that's matrix multiplication and the identity matrix this then leads us to our fourth operation division of matrices, which is um, essentially multiplication by the inverse. So this is how we're going to define the inverse of um, of matrix multiplication. So what do you want for an inverse matrix? So for an inverse matrix, here I'm going to define, again, I really want to emphasize, I'm, I'm just defining it for a two by two. You can find it in general. Um, there's a formula that looks a lot like exactly what we're about to do here, um, but it's it just gets a lot a lot messier when it's more than two dimensions. Um, so here I I want to really focus just on the two by two case. Um, so just reminding that that's our focus. Um, so the so first of all, just in general, what do we mean by the inverse? Um, so the inverse of a matrix A is the matrix um, written that we write as a to the minus one, right? And what defines a to the minus one? Well, you want that a times a inverse and a inverse times a, you want those to both be the identity matrix. So this is actually true in any dimension, not just two by two, three by three, four by four, whatever you want. Um, this is what we mean by a matrix inverse. It's the thing you multiply a by to get back to the multiplicative identity. And this is very much the same as um, what we mean by that minus one power. You know, if you write three to the minus one, what property does that hold? Um, well, that's a third. We define that to be a third. Why? Because three times three to the minus one equals one, the multiplicative identity, right? So it's the same notation and the same kind of principle as you use in real numbers or rational numbers, right? Where we use that minus one exponent to mean um, the multiplicative inverse. It's the thing you multiply a quantity by to get back to one, the multiplicative identity. Same thing here, except we're working with matrices. So in the two by two case, there's a nice formula for it, um, right? So here's a formula for a two by two matrix inverse. The way that you do this is um, if you have a matrix A, B, C, D, right? The inverse of that matrix is 
one over the determinant, so AD minus BC. So take the reciprocal of the determinant and then multiply that by what? Well, you do D A, A negative B, negative C, right? This is the, um, the formula for the for a two by two matrix inverse. So, so if you notice, there are a few things happening here. Um, in particular, the um, in particular, we are dividing by the determinant, right? We're sort of commenting on this strange little formula that we wrote down, right? And then we're we're swapping the diagonal, right? So we're you want to reverse the diagonal entries. I think is a nice way to like sort of visualize that that formula, right? And then this diagonal you you negate, right? Negate the anti-diagonal. Right. So this is a um a formula for the for the two by two matrix matrix inverse. Um, it's it's very quick, right? Um, and like I said, in in higher dimensions, there there's a, actually a very similar formula, um, but it gets a lot messier, a lot te more tedious to calculate in higher dimensions. So so let's do an example here. So let's say find let's find the inverse of let's take the matrix um, A as um let's say how about two uh two three um or let's here let's do this let's do let's do the matrix negative 12 4 negative 25 8 right let's take let's find the inverse of this of this matrix right? um so what what would we do here i would do the i would find the determinant right that's what i'm going to divide by so the determinant here is negative 12 times 8, right, minus um, 4 times negative 25. So what does this become? This is um, I have 8 times 12 is um, 16 and 80, right, is negative 96. And then I have negative 4 times negative 25 is actually positive 100, right? So here I get 4 as my determinant. So there, there, there's my determinant of that of that matrix, right? So that's what I'm going to divide by. That's my that's my AD minus BC, right? So that's going to go out front. Oh, and I should note here, this is scalar multiplication, right? Because one over the determinant is right here, right? That operation is scalar multiplication. That's going to be the component wise operation, operation two that we defined way up above. So that's our that's our scalar multiplication. So you're you're going to multiply that number. Um, through each entry in the in the matrix. So, so what do I have there? Um, in this case, right, the A inverse is going to be what? It's going to be one over four scalar multiplied by what? Well, basically the same matrix, except you you trade the entries on the main diagonal, and then you negate the entries on the anti diagonal. Right. So this is what we get for our. A inverse. And then you can even put the one fourth through the matrix, right? You can carry out that scalar multiplication. So do that, you know, that um, do that operation, right? That's a perfectly good thing to do. So, so there we go. There's our A inverse, right? And now let's check it. So now let's check. So if I check this, what would I have? I'd, I want to make sure that A times A inverse equals the identity, right? So is this true? Let's see. Let's see. Let's take matrix A, right, which was our um, negative 12, 4, negative 25, 8, right? And then let's take matrix A inverse, which is 2, 25 fourths, minus 1, and minus 3. Let's multiply them together, and let's see if we actually get what, what we claim here. Do we get the identity matrix? So Let's look at this. So here I have first these two, right? So what do I get there? I have um, negative 12 times 2 is negative 24. And then I get 4 times 25 fourths is plus 25. Okay, that 
I like because that's one. And that's what that's what should be there in the identity matrix. So so far so good, right? Now let's do this negative 12, right, times minus one is positive 12. Four times minus three is negative 12. Oh good, that's zero. And that's what should be there in a identity matrix. Okay. Again, so far so good. Now let's do it this way. Negative 25 times two is negative 50, right? And then I have eight times 25 fourths. We'll cancel the four into the eight becomes a two, two times 50, sorry, two times 25, jump on the gun there, is 50. Um, that's zero as we hoped, All right? And then here we have negative 25 times negative one is 25. And then I have eight times minus three, beautiful, 24, right? So we did it, we got our identity matrix. So that's that gave us the identity matrix part. And if you, again, if you want a nice exercise, um, I'm not gonna do it here in the video, it's very similar, but pause the video, try this, right? Good exercise. Do you also get the identity matrix the other way, right? Do you get A inverse times A? Because remember, we said not always commutative matrix multiplication, right? It turns out a matrix will commute with its own inverse, A times A inverse, and A inverse times A will always be equal to each other because they're both equal to the identity. Um, so it works here, right? But, but go check that. That's a good, it's a good exercise um, if you want to follow up. But it, it'll it work, right? I'll, I'll spoiler the ending there for you. Um, so it will work. So that's inverses, right? That's matrix inverses. Um, that's, that's how they'll go. Um, one thing to note, so note, um, if the determinant equals zero, right? Then A is not invertible, right? Um, so just like over real numbers, you know, the there is no multiplicative inverse for the number zero, right? Ze if you take zero times something, it doesn't matter what you something you put there, you can't get one, right? You can't get back to the multiplicative identity. And the same thing is true for matrices whose determinant is zero. Um, you don't have a well-defined matrix inverse. There is no matrix that you can multiply a determinant zero matrix by to get back to that the multiplicative identity, right? Um, and you can kind of see it. It won't exist because up here in the formula, right? If, if there's division by zero, right? If that's zero, then then you're, you know, it's, you're sort of in <laughs> bad shape right? as far as this inverse formula, right? Um, so that's the thing. Um, you can't construct the matrix inverse if you have to turn it into, right? Um, here, we can't, we can't just leave them like that. Then we gotta, we gotta turn that frown upside down. Maybe this, this, uh, this guy likes it when matrices are not invertible. So there we go. Now you can, now you can sleep well tonight. He's, he's not just stuck there perpetually and frowning. So, <laughs> all right. Um, let's then go for our last operation, right? We have one last operation that we're gonna define, which is matrix exponentials. This one's crazy. Um, so this is, uh, maybe we, I think we're sort of paralleling the uh, Matrix movie trilogy here, right? Um, in, in, in a sense that, you know, one, the, the first batch was like pretty easy to follow, Matrix one. Um, the second was like, okay, see what's going on there. And then the third is just completely incomprehensible. Uh, so, except, except this, the difference is this is, incomprehensible at first but very interesting instead of uninter incomprehensible and uninteresting um so there we go there's my uh, movie review uh, alongside our uh, um matrix operations here so number five matrix exponentials how do you take e to a matrix well it turns out here's the cool thing we have just defined addition of matrices, multiplication of matrices, and scalar multiplication, right? So, and we have an identity matrix, right? So what you can do is you can do this. We have a nice formula for E, right? That only involves those operations, right? Multiplication, scale it, um, right? X to a power is just repeated multiplication. Um, Scalar multiplication, right? Multiplication by one over n factorial, just times some number. Addition, 
right? It happens to be a play many editions, but still. Um, so I can do all of those things with a real number. And now up above, I defined how to do all those things with matrices. So just define e to the a via the power series, right? So given, um, and I guess I should say where it's living, right? So given um, a in you know our set of matrices here, and it turns out you can do it actually for any square um, matrix. It doesn't have to just be um, two by two. We're going to focus on two by two again. Um, but it, you, you just define it via the power series, right? So you just mimic exactly that definition. Um, so you can define um, E to the A as the identity plus A plus um, one over two factorial A squared, right? Plus one over three factorial A cubed plus one over four factorial A to the fourth and so on, right? So just do the thing you would do for a E power series, but just stuff a matrix into the power series formula instead of um, instead of a numerical quantity, right? So it's a, it's a super trippy thing to do. Um, now, here, I'll erase the, this series because we don't really need it anymore. I just wanted to write it with the X um, to put it in kind of the familiar calc two looking form. Um, but so so that's, that's how you, we define a matrix exponential. Um, it's not obvious at all um, that this converges, um, this infinite series, but it does. Um, essentially what happens is as you take powers of matrix A, the entries inside the matrix tend to grow like polynomials because um, you're multiplying them and adding them, right? But then on the outside, you're dividing by something that grows on the order of a factorial, right? So that's why it turns out it, it essentially converges for the same reason that this series converges, the E power series, right? You have in the numerator, something that's polynomial growth, right? And on the denominator, you have something that's factorial growth. So it 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 converges um, by essentially the same kind of reasoning. Um, it's just messier and uglier to to prove because there are there's a little bit more going on. Um, yeah, which we won't go into that here, but in in later courses in say linear algebra or analysis, you might you might prove such a thing. Here, I'm just letting you know it, it's fine. It does it converges. Um, so there's another um, theorem that this is not obvious in the least, uh, but it ends up being really important in a lot of cases that we'll, we'll use it, use it with. Um, it is a theorem called the Baker Campbell Hausdorff theorem, um, and it Baker Campbell Hausdorff um, it's fun to write because you get to put two f's at the end of Hausdorff. Um, it's also a very cool theorem. It says that for um, and it's actually a slightly more general theorem than what I'm about to say here. Um, but um, it, you could say this is a corollary of the baker campbell Hausdorff theorem. And it, for our purposes, it's what we what we need. Um, it, it says that if you have um, two matrices that commute, so if A times B is B times A, um, then this is true. And, you know, you might say, well, yeah, of course that's true. I, I learned that in pre-calc or college algebra or whatever. E to the A times E to the B is E to the A plus B, right? But these are matrices now, right? So we can't necessarily take it for granted that all the properties of exponentials still hold true just because they held true when there were numbers up there, that they're automatically true if there are matrices up there, right? Um, and in fact, if A and B do not commute, then this normal looking property of exponentials doesn't necessarily hold true. So this um, this is something that is is good to be aware of, right? This sort of very familiar property of exponentials it does hold true as long as your matrices commute. So we're gonna we're gonna lean heavily on this fact um, in in a bit here. So all right. So how can you calculate matrix exponentials? Um, you know how this crazy infinite series formula is it actually useful? Can you actually use it? It turns out, yeah, um, you can use it quite, it's a little bit difficult in some cases, but you can use it quite easily in some cases. So um, how can one compute matrix exponentials, right, um, is the question. 
So the we're gonna partially answer this this question. Um, so I'm gonna say, you know, I'm gonna be honest that in general it's difficult, right? Um, but it's there's one case where it's um, where it's easy, and then well, not easy, but there's one case where there's there's a really nice algorithm that you can just do like by hand. Um, but here, but there is one case um, where it is um, not so bad um, is the case where your matrix A has only one eigenvalue. If your matrix A has only one eigenvalue, then it ends up being not too bad. Um, and here is why. So call it lambda, right? So call your matrix, call the only eigenvalue of your matrix, call it lambda. And if your matrix only has one eigenvalue, lambda, then I'll show you why it's not too bad um, to calculate the matrix exponential. Because here's what you can do. Take e to the a, and whatever that eigenvalue is, add and subtract lambda i from matrix A. That's the first step in calculating a matrix exponential. Then apply baker campbell hausdorff Right. Where am I applying Baker Campbell Hausdorff? Well, I'm this is my matrix. That's my first matrix, and that's my second matrix, right? Um, and I'm doing this normal looking property of exponentials, right? This is valid because because lambda i, which is going to look like this, lambda zero zero lambda, that commutes with everything. And all two by two matrices. Um, so it actually doesn't even matter what the other matrix is, the A minus lambda I piece. That part is, it doesn't matter what entries are, are over there. Um, the fact that you're doing lambda zero, zero, lambda, that those matrices actually commute with any matrix that you multiply them by. Um, and and you could you could check this, right? Again, this is a this is a good exercise. So you can go off and, and check this, right? Just write yourself down an A, B, C, D, and then write down lambda, zero, zero, lambda, and verify that you get the same thing as lambda, zero, zero, lambda times A, B, C, D. That whether you multiply on the left or whether you multiply on the right, you get the same thing. And you know why they're equal? Well, because they're both equal to just lambda, the scalar lambda times A, B, C, D. You'll You'll see that if you work out what's on the left, you work out what's on the right, you'll get just the scalar lambda times um, times both of those. So it's 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 a very nice um, very nice fact that about matrix multiplication. All right, so that's why we can split like that. Um, what happens next? What happens next is here take this and apply the e power series. And take this and apply the e power series, right? So now we're going to use the definition twice. So this is the very clever trick is in general, you know, you stuff just a random matrix into an e power series. Man, it's just, a I don't know, you just get this big infinite series and it's not really clear what to do with it. Um, but this is the trick is when it has only one eigenvalue, you can decompose it into a sum of two matrices that then you apply the e power series to each of those and something far more manageable is going to come out. Um, so here we're going to get i and then a minus lambda i plus a minus lambda i squared over 2 factorial plus a minus lambda i cubed over 3 factorial and so on. And then we're going to multiply that by i plus lambda i plus 1 over 2 factorial lambda lambda i squared plus and so on, right? So so we're doing the e power series on, on both of these. Um, these are both going to become very manageable. So you'll see pretty quickly here that you're going to get, um, act, this is going to truncate, right? On, on this case, all but finitely many terms will be zero.
are going to zero out uh, in this. Um, and here, you're actually going to get, um, this is going to converge. Um, to something nice, which we'll we'll see we'll see exactly what this what this is. Um, here you'll have infly many times, but it'll it'll actually be something super nice. Um, and in particular, it's just going to be it's just going to be e to the lambda on the diagonals is is all we're going to get. Um, so so that's the big trick here is do this decomposition, and you'll see um, what you get is. And then apply the e definition, the e power series definition, instead of applying it right from from square run, um, and you get something so much more manageable. So that's the process, and then you can carry out that multiplication at the very end to finish it out. Um, so let's let's show that. I want to show an example here. So let's calculate um, the matrix exponential e to the a for um, a equal to. Let's do so here. We actually use this same matrix that we have up here. Um, negative 12, 4, negative 25, 8. So negative 12, 4, negative 25, 8. So this matrix, now I'm sort of contriving this, right? That I picked the matrix that only has one eigenvalue, right? Just the repeated, a single repeated eigenvalue. Um, because I didn't really give you a good way to calculate a matrix exponential if you have different eigenvalues. Um, but here, you know, you could say, okay, well, let's find the eigenvalues, right? That's that's going to be your first step. What is what are the eigenvalues of this matrix? Hopefully, it's repeated because otherwise, my method doesn't apply. Um, so let's let's do this. So determinant a minus lambda i. What do I get? I get the determinant of negative twelve minus lambda four, negative twenty five, eight minus lambda, right? Negative twelve minus lambda eight minus lambda um, plus a hundred, right? And then Let's um, expand this out. So I have, um, what do I have? I have negative 96, right? Just doing regular FOIL. Um, so negative 96 plus 12 lambda uh, minus 8 lambda plus lambda squared plus 100. Negative 96 plus 100, that's just 4, right? So I get lambda squared. Um, plus four lambda plus four, and that is lambda plus two squared. Okay, so here I have lambda equals minus two with multiplicity of two, right? So this is a repeated eigenvalue, um, right? It only has one eigenvalue, just negative two is the only eigenvalue of this matrix. So now, what did my little method up here say? What should I do? I'm supposed to take e to the a now to, to calculate e to the a what's my trick i'm going to take i'm going to take this i'm going to add and subtract 2i sorry negative 2i from this um, from this matrix a right that's that's my trick um and here, and you know what, I'm gonna actually put this on the next step just to show that it really is just e to the a to start. Um, but then here, I'm gonna make it be the actual two different expressions. Right, and I'm gonna split it as e to the a. So this is gonna be a, e to the a plus two i times e to the minus two i. And now let's unpack all of these as numbers. So I have matrix A, and I'm going to add 2i to it. So what do I get there? I get negative 10, 4, negative 25, and 10. Right? Because i is just ones on the diagonal and zeros on the off diagonal. So I so I'm just adding 2i, right? So I add 2 to the diagonal entries. Then I have e to the minus 2i. So that's negative 2, 0, 0, minus 2. And now that I've done this decomposition, now use the e power series on both of these, right? So here on this first one, I have um, the identity matrix, right? Then I have A. And then I have 1 over 2 factorial A squared. 
and then one over three factorial a cubed, and so on, right? That's the e power series on this first e, e power. Right? Then on this second one, I have, I'm going to have an expression that looks very similar, but it's going to be all the powers of this matrix. Minus 2, 0, 0 minus 2 with the corresponding factorials. Okay. Now, here's the beautiful thing that happens. If you take this matrix and you square it, so this made this matrix right here, if you square it, I claim you get the zero matrix, right? So this is the, the nice thing. So come off on the side and convince yourself of this. Minus 10, 4, minus 25, 10. Square it, right? So multiply it by itself. No matter which row and column you do, you always get zero. So like here, we have um, negative 10 times negative 10 is positive 100. But then 4 times 20, negative 25 is negative 100. So it's zero. How about here? You have negative 10 times 4 is negative 40. And then 4 times 10 is positive 40. So you get zero, right? And then what do we get here? Negative 25 times negative 10 is positive 250. 10 times negative 25 is negative 250. So you get zero. And one last case, negative 25 times 4 is a negative 100. 10 times 10, positive 100, you get zero. So when you square this matrix, you just get all zeros. You get the all zeros matrix, right? So then it's already zeros when you square it. So this is all zero. Well, then when you cube it, it's still all zero. When you get to the fourth power, it's all zero. Fifth power is all zero. Well, they're all zero, right? So that first infinite series, which looks crazy, ends up being just negative 9, 4, negative 25, 11. That's it. Because you only, that whole infinite series boils down to just, really just these two matrices. They're the only things that stick around in this case, right? And in different dimensions, you know, you could have more stick around before it, it drops off, but that's that's it for here, right? Um, so they just do that matrix addition with just those two terms, right? Now, here also something really nice happened when you do these powers, these matrix powers. So when you square this, um, this ends up just being negative 2 squared, 0, 0, negative 2 squared, right? And same thing with the cube. If you if you cube it, right, it ends up, so if you cube it instead, it ends up just being that cubed and so on. It, it, any power, because it's a diagonal matrix, and you can work out all the matrix multiplication, good exercise to do so. Um, you'll see that that's exactly what happens, right? So so here, that's what happens on this side. You get 0, 1, 0. Um, then you get minus 2, 0, 0, minus 2. And then here, you're going to get minus 2 over 2 factorial, minus 2 squared over 2 factorial, minus 2 squared over 2 factorial, and 0 is on the off diagonal. Here, you're going to get minus 2 cubed over 3 factorial, minus 2 cubed over 3 factorial, and 0 is on the off diagonal. So that's what we get. Then, then what happens? Then we have these infinite series, right? So add this up. What do you get? On the upper left, we have um, something that looks exactly like the e power series with negative 2 plugged in for x. Right, and and we have that same thing on the bottom, on the bottom right. Right, so the the upper left and the lower right. Uh, which is not leaving enough space there, but that's that's okay. You you can get what what I mean as far as what goes where. It should they shouldn't be like overlapping vertically like that. Um, the upper left and lower right are are just the e e series, right? They're just e powers. Um. The bottom left and upper right are both just zeros, right? Um, so now we, we can write that, right? So this is e to the minus 2, 0, 0, e to the minus 2. 
And now I, I'm, I have it all boiled down to just this little multiplication right here, right? So now just do this multiple, make sure it's multiplication. We get negative nine e to the minus two, four e to the minus two, right? Negative 25 e to the minus two and 11 e to the minus two, right? You can, um, you can write it that way or if you wanna, you know, pull out the e to the minus two, you can do that too. You can say it's just the other matrix times e to the minus two perfectly perfectly fine right either either one is a good way to express your answer um you know i i, I kind of like this just because it's like okay we started with a two by two matrix we took e to a two by two matrix there's our two by two matrix for our answer right but it's it's also kind of clean to, to write it this way so so there we go that there's matrix multiplicate matrix exponential right in the case where you have just a single repeated eigenvalue right? so there there we go operations on matrices right you can Add, subtract, add, subtract, multiply, divide, scalar multiply, or matrix multiply. Um, and you can take E to a matrix, right? All our little matrix operations. Great. Thanks.